Welcome to the Braille Institute. My name is Greg Nutt. I'm the first vice or second vice commander for AMVETS Post 18 here in Orange County. Uh, with me is uh, Commander Terry McCarty, a U.S. Marine, a Vietnam veteran. We've got uh, Dr. Terry McCarty, or <laughs> Dr. Chuck Kissel, who is our first vice commander, uh, U, uh, U.S. Army Reserves, correct? We have our honor guard with us. Later they'll be introduced by the Legion of Honor, uh, retired Captain Navy. In the audience, I also see some of our uh, AMVETS Post 18, our former chaplains back there. Uh, we also want to welcome Jose Guerrara. I get that right from Lewis Korea's office in the 46th District. Uh, do we have any veterans today that are attending? Can you please stand and be recognized for your service? Thank you. So I wanted to thank you. Please be seated. I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we do. Uh, we are a, we are the oldest World War II uh, veteran service organization in the country. We are probably one of the least known, but we are the oldest. We were signed into law in 1947 um, after being chartered by Congress by President Truman. And we have been working for veterans ever since and expanding our membership to now include any veteran who has served and honorably discharged. Uh, we are veterans, helping veterans, as you can see by some of our signs. Uh, we help veterans make their claims at the VA at no cost. We have career centers to help transitioning vets or any vets really find work. Uh, we are the voice of veterans in D.C. Uh, we uh, have a program, AMVETS in Action, where we have a junior ROTC and ROTC medals. We do military funeral honors, which you'll see today for the first time uh, the folding of the flag as we do at military funerals and we will also be firing uh, three volleys of M1 rifles so uh, we'll give you another warning about that and those with dogs uh, please you know get a hold of them comfort them you know because uh, we don't want them to get shocked uh, also Chuck was going to come up our first vice commander and tell you about the Freedom Foundations which is a national program Good morning, uh, and again, thank you for coming and attending this um, uh, event because we th feel that it is important to give back to the community, and you're part of this community. Uh, you fly the flag, and that's important to us. Uh, the flag is the um, uh, symbol of the nation, as you know, and we're responsible for sending back students, uh, usually um, high school people that are at least sophomores, sometimes even seniors, uh, back to Valley Forge uh, for uh, uh, a leadership historical uh, interlude with respect to how the Congress reacted and how the militias reacted and were trained uh, back in Valley Forge uh, during that encampment. Uh, that work has been done uh, since about 1985 and it's done every year. Uh, I've been to 15 of them. Uh, I did not go this year, but um, uh, these things are important to us. Uh, besides that, uh, we are also responsible for a Carillon program. Uh, that um, rings the chimes of freedom uh, in uh, most federal cemeteries, including the ones that are overseas, as well as non-federal cemeteries uh, but that is not inclusive for just um, cemeteries. It could be done even for businesses such as yourself um, uh, or other kinds of companies. We also have a program whereby the, um, the service officers outside of the state of California um, are operated through the national organization and those, those service officers are in 21 states. Um, AMVETS is only in 40 states uh, and that's our coverage uh, since 1947. So those are some of the things that we do at the national level and I'm kind of speaking as a national person here. Um, I'd like to uh, bring uh, Commander McCarty up, who will address some of the things that we do locally, because we're the only Orange County post uh, that AMVETS has. Um, so uh, if you want it done, uh, we're the ones that wind up doing it locally. Terry?
Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to be here and to see everybody uh, sitting around. And obviously, we're we're all patriotism uh, bounded, and uh, we're here to to uh, give us give them give you this uh, patriotism uh, statue uh, for flying the flag. And uh, we think that it's very important that we do recognize any organization that does fly our flag on a, on a daily basis. For the uh, Welcome Home program, which is a state program through our state foundation. Uh, over the years, we have, since 2012, we have served over 4,768 veterans. Uh, what we do is we find honorably discharged veterans. We get them to the Long Beach VA. We get them involved with Section 8 housing. Once they do get housing, then they give us a call, our foundation, which is just uh, down the street on, on Euclid, and uh, they give us a laundry list of type of things that they're going to need for their, their, their condo or their uh, apartment. And so we show up and we serve, uh, as I said, over 4,700 veterans. We uh, Items uh, that we have delivered are over 60,000 items. The value of those items is over $2.2 million. Um, the, we also do a, uh, every summer at the Orange County Fairgrounds, we have a booth there for the purpose of uh, helping veterans get their, their benefits. Uh, we're resources there. We're the only veterans organization that has been at the Orange County Fairgrounds for the last eight years. We literally change people's lives every hour that we're there. So without any further ado, I'll turn this back over to Greg. Thank you. Greg. Thank you, Terry. And uh, Terry's being a little modest. Oh, uh, yes, thank you, Terry. We are the only veteran service organization that gets housing for homeless well not housing a lot of the other uh, groups get housing but they don't furnish it so they they have an empty apartment let's say so we really work hard to get uh, the veterans beds tvs um, furniture and that's part of that is through our thrift stores and the nearest one is in long beach on the long beach uh, lakewood border so if you are have donations and you have in your mind to um, donate Please think of AMVETS, and that helps veterans and the Welcome Home program. That's a big part of it. Uh, we also do scholarships. We have the su Suicide Awareness. Um, you see this one green band I'm wearing? It's the Remember 22 a Day program, because uh, 22 veterans on average a day commit suicide. So we have suicide hotline information here. It's a big part of our program. Uh, Terry has literally talked down uh, gentlemen and women from suicide at our booth at the fair that are in crisis. So that's a big part of our uh, our program. We also uh, at Heroes Hall, if you've been there at the Orange County Fairgrounds, we recently had the opportunity of moving what we call the Orange County Walk of Honor, which used to be at the county building in Santa Ana, to the fairgrounds. And it's to recognize the uh, Medal of Honor and Distinguished Service Cross level Orange County veterans. And one of them, uh, Tybor Rubin, has had the distinct honor of having the Long Beach VA named after him. And he not only was in, I think he's the only MOH recipient that was in a German concentration camp, immigrated to America, joined our service after a little help and got denied the first time because he didn't speak the language very well. But on his second enlistment try, some of his fellow enlistees helped him a lot. Went to Korea, had a, uh, a company sergeant who was very anti-Semitic and sent him on the worst missions. 
documented true facts that other soldiers uh, witnessed was nominated by his commanders, two of which died after suggesting he be looked at for the MOH, and this sergeant never passed it along. So years later, when they were re-looking at stories and actions, found that Tybor was definitely um, deserving to be a recipient to the Medal of Honor. And he spent countless hours at the VA volunteering, and then later was named for it. I've actually seen his son on many occasions at the Walk of Honor. I'll just happen to be there, and I'll see him in a distance at his dad's plaque, just, you know, uh, you know, remembering his, his father. Uh, and this, yeah, the citation is there, and I have a copy of here. I don't think I can read it today. It's already choking me up a little bit. Um, let's see. Also, I wanted uh, Chuck to come up one more time. Chuck is a world-renowned expert on the American flag from where it started to where it is now. And we do have some of his books that are right up here. So Chuck, one last time, why don't you come up and tell us a little bit about your, uh, your flag book. Uh, the people at the Institute here um, have, uh, received copies uh, several months ago, but there's certainly more available if needed. Uh, for the rest of the new audience, there's some up here. Uh, the American flag was kind of uh, not thunk up and done. Uh, it evolved, and there were a lot of missteps. Uh, I'm one of the top ten, I'm probably number ten, um, of the U.S. flag geeks, uh, but it's U.S. federal, not Confederate, not state flags, nothing like that. Um, and the reason for that is uh, I started as a scout uh, way back when, and I, I didn't know how many there might be. Uh, and you might think about that number. Uh, the current estimate is over 2,000 in our history um, that, are, that are legal U.S. federal American flags. Um, you're looking at one up there, uh, the 50, current 50 star. Um, and um, it, it evolved from basically the British flags, uh, the one that you see today, uh, the British flags back in the 1700s. But the book shows you the collection that I have, uh, unless it says it's not in the collection. These are actually photographs of the inventory. Uh, we have marched in parades. We've had static events uh, at events. For instance, Knott's Berry Farm, just around the corner. Uh, we used to do Constitution Day. Uh, downtown, Santa, uh, downtown Anaheim at uh, Roundabout uh, near Disney Hall, we used to do that on Flag Day um, for five or six years. But um, uh, it may interest you to know, we got turned down three times in a row by the Rose Parade. And I haven't bothered to go back and ask them a fourth time. So you have to wonder why that doesn't work. The flag's kind of losing its luster, hence the book. And uh, uh, this book is self-published, uh, and it is uh, pictures only, except for the first uh, backside of the uh, cover. Uh, and a reference uh, section uh, on the back side, uh, inside of the, of the cover. Otherwise, you're looking at pictures, and I tell the story backwards, 50 stars all the way back to when there weren't any. So um, this stuff um, uh, means something to me, and I see history differently in my mind. Uh, when somebody says, this happened, I start what, thinking what flag was present when that happened, and what were the values people had at that point in time? And the flag tells you some of those values. Uh, and then I start thinking about the way that event is, that er the way that everybody else thinks about it. So um, for me, it's flag first. Um, but um, for you, if you'll just um, honor it a bit more than we do, uh, that would be good enough from my point of view. So. Uh, Again, if you don't have a copy of the book, please feel free to get one. Um, and if you um, have some difficulty um, uh, becoming one with the book, uh, please get somebody who can help you with that. Sometimes, even if you can see it, you might not understand. So um, if you can visualize it in your mind and make, it, make sense of it, um, that would be what I would charge you to do as a mission statement. Um, but uh, I honor it 
and I hope that you will also. Greg? Tell us, how many people does it take to market those flags? How many are present? Right. Oh, you say March. Yeah. You, I, I thought you said market. Uh, okay, the question is, um, uh, how many do I have? Uh, I have over 300 of the 2,000. There was a time when I didn't know it was 2,000, I thought I was going to get them all. Well, once I find out it's 2,000, I gave up. Not going to happen in my lifetime. Um, but at 300, at eight abreast, that means eight in a line across the street from one curb to the other, it's 200 feet long uh, to march that. And I have the flagpoles and harnesses to do that job. Um, there are old um, La Palma City newspaper kind of things. I don't recall the name of the newspaper for La Palma. Uh, but that's we've marched there several times. And you get some sense uh, from those pictures as to how big this is. Uh, I have a picture of it marching at you, uh, standing off to the side, and you can hard, uh, the last person at the end of that line, uh, it, it's quite small, perspective speaking. Um, 200 feet's a, a lot of faith. It takes two minutes if you're standing on the curb for it to actually pass you at a normal marching speed. So uh, that'll give you a sense of, of why I did it. Um, I, I'm trying to show people what it is, Never mind, just look at the book. But uh, hopefully, Greg, that gets you where you wanted to go. Thank you, Chuck. Few people are really dedicated to that kind of uh, mission. And unfortunately, the history of the flag is not taught as uh, well as it used to be. So we're here again to honor the Braille Institute for flying the flag every day, and it's our patriotism award. And I'm, I think I might have skipped over that, assuming some things <laughs> at the beginning, which I do sometimes. So the Braille Institute was founded in 1919. And you know, there's a big company in this same city that likes to say it all started with a mouse. Well, here it all started with one man, J. Robert Atkinson, who had an accident. He was a cowboy, had an accident with a firearm two years before, I believe, he started the Institute and started trans uh, translating books to Braille. So it's, it's that one man that gets us to where we are today. In 1971, this institute opened. Uh, recently, it was totally rebuilt, and uh, later we'll find out a little more about uh, uh, this Anaheim location. In all, there's seven locations, Anaheim, Laguna Hills, Los Angeles, Rancho Mirage, Riverside, San Diego, and Santa Barbara. Uh, so they do really good work. It's all uh, free to the people who need the service. Uh, large and generous donations help keep it afloat. So we thank those who are uh, doing that. And we'll hear a little more later when we hand out the award. So right now I'm going to introduce you to uh, retired Navy Captain Richard Florence, who's our Honor Guard Legion of Honor. And I know you don't like the microphone, but I think today with the noise behind us. Okay. <laughs> So what's going to happen first is he's, uh, we've never done this at one of these events before. Uh, we do military funerals. We are going to demonstrate the flag folding. After that, we will have a moment of silence while the honor guard um, sets up to remember those who have fallen for this flag and continue to serve. And we will have the three rifle volleys and we'll give you one more warning uh, before that um, to make sure the dogs and everybody are ready. So Richard. As Greg said, my name is Richard Florence, and I'm a retired United States Navy captain. I and the other uniform members you see here before you are part of AMVET's post-18 Legion of Honor. And as such, we perform final burial honors for military veterans. Every military veteran that has served six months or more is due a full honors burial. Uh, you can either go through, uh, normally, uh, uh, if you're using a, a, an undertaker or, or a, uh, one of those companies, uh, th they'll, they'll do it for you. But if you don't use one of those, you can contact any service organization or our AMVETS and we'll perform the service. I want to introduce the members of my crew. Uh, let's see, somebody hiding? Here. 
Gary Jurgemeyer is uh, United States Navy. He's holding the flag. Bob Bircha, United States Army. On the left up there, Brent Nielsen, United States Army. And Jerry Hurley, United States Army. What we'll do here today is the exact same thing we would do at a burial service. We will fold the flag. At a burial service, we would present that flag to the next of kin. Uh, after which, our, our rifle team fires three volleys, and then our bugler will play taps. I would ask uh, those that can stand, the veterans that can stand, please stand and salute. Uh, if you can't stand, salute from a seating position. Uh, and the others, please put your hand over your heart. Just a note about, uh, about that flag that Greg talked about that you fly here. Um, sometimes uh, the flying of a flag becomes second nature to the people that, that are around it every day. Uh, but I can tell you that as a veteran, every time I pass an organization, no matter who it is, private, public, government, it, 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 it makes me feel proud to have served in the United States military. So I want to thank the, uh, the people that are responsible here for flying that flag and, and hope you'll do it forevermore. So thank you. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veterans departing our rank who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. For as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. For in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is where our hearts lie. It is with our hearts that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all our enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who enters into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood and mothers, for it has been through their faith, their love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in the Hebrew eyes the God of Abraham and Jacob and Isaac. The 12th fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorified in the Christian eyes, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The 13th fold, or when the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation's motto, in God we trust.
it's at this point that the commander would be handing the flag to the recipient, uh, the next of kin. So please, uh, very, uh, in just a few seconds, we are going to be firing the rifles, so uh, please be prepared. This is where I'd like to ask for a moment of silence for those who have fallen in service of this flag, who still serve and who will continue to serve. Hi, Commander. Thank you, Honor Guard. There should be no more loud noises now. <laughs> so if we could have um, Phil Reeves, the Educational Program Manager here, come up. He's been uh, helping me get this uh, all coordinated. And also Lisa Jimenez, the Associate Vice President of Programs and Services, who will be receiving the honors today. And uh, I, I think it's given up for the day. Uh, so from uh, Representative Lou Correa's office in the 46th District, we have Jose Guerrero, who will be handing out our first award. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jose Guevara. I'm a field representative for Congressman Lucrea. Um, I am also a Marine Corps veteran, so uh, it, it's really uh, fun to see that AMVETS does this uh, and recognize our, our patriotic uh, organizations in the community. Uh, so on behalf of the Congressman, I want to present uh, the Certificate of Special Recognition to the Braille Institute. Um, I'm not going to read it all, but uh, Let's see, I applaud the pride you have for our American flag as it represents freedom, honor, pride, and love of country. November 21st, 2009, signed J. Luis Correa, Member of Congress. Thank you very much. And just in case, anybody else slip in that I didn't recognize earlier. Okay. All right, so if Terry, if you want to come up and present uh, the award. Yep. This is, you can lay down. Yeah. 
So I will read the, what's on our award. It's a Patriotism Award, AMVETS California Post 18. In recognition and appreciation for displaying the American flag each day, it is an honor to present this award to the Braille Institute, your patriot, patriotism for our country as an inspiration to all. And to, George, uh, to quote George M. Cohan, you're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Thank you so much. And Lisa, if you'd like to say a few words, tell us. I just want to say thank you so much uh, for all of this. This is amazing. And it's just been, uh, thank you for coming by. Thank you for continuing to do what you do, the American flag. And I definitely learned something today, especially uh, 2,000, you said, 2,000 different flags. That's pretty amazing. I didn't know that. Definitely, I learned something today as well. Uh, you know, Braille Institute, as mentioned earlier, has been around for about 100 years, and we're hoping to be around for 100 more to continue to work with individuals who are losing their vision, uh, to continue to support our veterans who are losing our vision as well. I know we have quite a few veterans here today, and the Institute uh, as a whole uh, works with uh, quite a number of veterans. We do a lot of different activities here, uh, working on your O&M skills, whether it be with your white canes, how to use your white canes, or how to use assistive technology, how to uh, continue using uh, your phones to stay connected with family and friends and loved ones uh, across the world. We do so much here, and we have so many volunteers that volunteer their time as well to do so much for uh, all of our students, uh, even our staff as well, as I hold up the sign. <laughs> So I just want to say one more time, thank you. Thank you for coming by and thank you for uh, doing this ceremony and continuing to honor the flag and just everything that you do as well. We're, we are proud uh, to, to have the flag up every single day and we'll continue to do it forevermore, just as you mentioned. Thank you, Phil. Uh, I just wanted to thank all of you who are veterans. Um, that came out today for this, uh, you know, very important ceremony. It means a lot for me on a personal level. Both of my grandfathers, my father-in-law were veterans. Um, and then I have two brother-in-laws who are veterans as well. So this means quite a bit for me. Um, you know, I choke up a little bit with the, the, riot, the, the volley and the, the taps. It reminds me of my grandfather's services. And it just really means a lot to me. So thank you. Um, and then I also want to thank, you know, Braille Institute at all of our regional centers fly the, you know, flies the flag. It is something that is just extremely important to uh, Braille Institute. And as Bill said, we will continue to do, uh, you know, forever more. So again, thanks. Uh, thank you to uh, American Veterans. This really means a lot to us as an organization and also to, to me personally as well. So thank you very much for coming. Beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you for all uh, for attending. Uh, we do have some information about um, our post here, membership, also for, uh, we have a flyer about our Legion services for military funerals, suicide awareness, um, homeless program, a flag book, all that. So please feel free to uh, come up and uh, take a look at that or ask us any questions if you do. So again, thank you for coming and that concludes the ceremony. <laughs>